This lesson is an overview of the Fetch API. The objectives for this lesson are to learn what you can do with the Fetch function, learn the various objects in the Fetch function. We're going to see a simple sample of get and a simple sample of post, and we're going to explore the properties of the response and the request objects. Now bear with me, this is all slides, but it's all important to get you prepared for the next coming lessons. The Fetch API is built into JavaScript and all modern browsers. It's simply a wrapper around the XML HTTP request object, but it uses JSON objects to make it easier to use. It's asynchronous and promise based. Fetch is the function that is used. There are other objects that we're going to learn about request, response, and headers. The Fetch API allows us to get data, post, put, delete, patch, and of course other verbs as well, and upload a file. We can upload multiple files. We can process a text file line by line. So lots of great functionality available in the Fetch API. Let's take a look at the small amount of code that you have to write to get some data from a web API. You pass in a URL as the first parameter where the web API is located. The first dot then method converts the response to JSON and then passes it on to the second dot then method, which is where you then process that response. You process whatever JSON it returns back. So you need to know obviously what your API is expecting to give you back. The catch is for error handling. So this is the promise based approach where everything just gets chained together and based on whether things are successful or whether there's an error, we're either going to go through the thens or we're going to go through the catch. Very simple. Let's take a look at the properties of the response object. Body is the data being returned and we use the dot JSON method to extract it. Body used, set to true if the body has been read. Headers, an object containing all the headers used. OK, set to true or false based on whether the call succeeded or not. Redirected, set to true or false whether or not it's been redirected. Status, an HTTP status code such as 200, 400, 404, etc. Status text, the text associated with the status code such as OK, bad request, not found, things like that. Type, the type of request made such as cores or basic. URL, the URL which was used in the request. Now let's take a look at a post. We still do the fetch and we pass in a request object now as the second parameter. So the URL goes in as the first parameter just like it did before, but we now have a request object as the second parameter. And it's inside of here that you set things like the method, whether it's post, put, delete. We have a body, which is the data that we want to post. It has to be stringified, so JSON stringified. And a header, which is any headers that you need to pass. If we're going to be passing JSON, set the content type to application slash JSON. If you're passing XML, you'd want application slash XML. After that, everything's just the same. We have a then where we grab the response and we convert it to JSON, and then we do something with that. And if any error occurs, we have a catch. Let's take a look at the request object and the various properties that we have. We saw methods so that can be get, post, put, or delete. And I put a little asterisk by the ones that are the default. We have a mode, which can be no cores, cores, same origin. It can be cache, where it can be default, no cache, reload, force cache, only if cached. We have credentials, which can be same origin or emit. We have headers, that's an object with any valid HTTP header you want in it, or headers. A redirect, which can be manual, follow, or error. We have a referrer policy, which can be any of these various referrer policies that you want. And the body, which is a stringified JSON object. So like I said, very few slides, but I wanted to give you an example of everything that we're going to be looking at throughout the rest of this course. So fetch can perform many async operations. It's object based, which is really neat. So that response and those request objects make it very easy to set options. Fetch is promise based, which again we like because then we're chaining those methods together. Coming up next, we're going to create a web API server using Node.js.